and we just kind of combine our two backgrounds. And she's the healthiest human being that I've ever known. She's got all the degrees. She understands the body. She competed professionally in fitness. She owned a gym. So she's got all the accolades behind it. But she lives health more than anybody I've ever known. I mean, and it's everything that she does. Like with our kids, they don't do artificial food colors or they don't do sodas. They don't do Twinkies. They don't do anything like that, you know. And, you know, she's very, very dedicated. And so she kept saying, with your background in, in, in the networking space and with my background with, with nutrition, we, we just need to do this ourselves. We need to create a product that will allow people to bring their body into balance first thing in the morning because that's the most important thing. And she trained hundreds of people. She noticed that if people started their day off wrong, you know, coffee and donuts or bagels and cream cheese or fruit loops or they skip breakfast, it really set them up to fail the rest of the day. And yet, on the other hand, if they balanced their body first thing in the morning and had a focus on that, those are the people that are in fantastic shape. And she experienced. Hi, everyone. I just want to touch base with you real quick and say thank you. Thank you for helping us grow this channel and your subscribes, likes, and comments and engagement. It really helps with the growth of the channel. Additionally, we're going to do something a little different today with this episode with Marty Hoker, and that is we're going to let the whole thing run for the full episode instead of splitting it up into two parts. Let me know what you think of the new approach in the comments, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. Welcome, Marty. <laughs> Yay. So happy to have you on Sunday Communion Podcast. It's great to be here, Lee. <laughs> I'd always like to start with, you know, childhood, background. We don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it, but in my research, I found something that I did not know existed, which was the Marty Holker personal website. And I was like, well, right there, we could just read <laughs> off all of that. It's so well done and so beautiful. We'll put that in the description box. So everybody can go check that out because it's really beautifully done. Um, that article that was written about the family. But if you could just take us through the, the early years of Marty. So my background, Lee, we grew up in Minnesota and my parents in 1963. So my dad was 25 years old. My mom was 19 and they got introduced to Shackley from their brother. Actually, a liquid soap called Basic H. And my parents had never been in sales. My dad was in school trying to be an athletic coach. And they got introduced to Shackley. They started sharing it with people. And this is back in 1963 where hardly anybody knew about you know, network marketing or anything like this. But they went on to build the business, the biggest business in Shackley. And Shackley became the biggest network marketing company in the world. So we're talking about well over $300 million a year in sales. And that's how I grew up. So my parents built a business with hundreds of thousands of people around the country sharing a product that they believed in. And so that's really my background is find something that you believe in and share it with others. Was that a door-to-door -door type of sale back in the day? No, it's just direct sales. And so it's, it's really hard to fathom what my parents were able to accomplish because that was before cell phones and computers and anything, uh, just rotary dial phones, you know, where you had to go, da -da 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 -da, you know, and they built a business with hundreds of thousands of people throughout the United States. Um, my dad used to do a lot of meetings. And so my mom grew up in a Protestant family that was very musical. And so she wanted our family to be very musical. So we created a group and we performed over 600 concerts in uh, nine countries. Wow. We would perform at these Shackley events. You know, one time we performed with Bob Hope at the Northrop Auditorium in Minneapolis, which is kind of cool. And we would uh, occasionally perform in front of 10, 15,000 people at these, at these large Shackley events that my dad was kind of the keynote speaker. How old were you? That was probably a 10-year stretch. I mean, when, when my oldest sisters went off to college, that's kind of when the, the group, you know, died. How many siblings do you have? Five boys, and we all played athletics. So we played high school and college, you know, football, basketball, and those types of things. So when my sisters left for school um, and it was just the boys left at home, uh, we kind of retired the music, kind of put the uh, the spats and the tap dance shoes away and, and just focused on football and basketball. So it was a fun childhood. We did a lot. We, we traveled the world and, and did a lot of things with Shackley. It was fun. And then you did what? What happened to you when, when you went off to college? What was your goal? Sports. 
you know, was kind of my life. And so, but I had a couple of unfortunate situations. I developed patella tendon tendonitis in my knees really bad. And so in high school, I had to stop high jumping. But in college, when you're a basketball player and uh, you suffer with patella tendonitis, it's, it's brutal. And then in football, I tore my rotator cuff and I'm a quarterback. So my injuries kind of ended my, my college career earlier than I would have liked to. But, you know, that got me into networking. And that's what I've been doing for full time for the last 30 years. And I love it. And I've been able to develop groups. We've sold, you know, several billion dollars in sales and hundreds of thousands of people, kind of like what my parents did, but it's a little bit different now. It's more on a global basis. We had a group over in New Zealand that I was uh, talking with earlier. And, you know, to be able to build a business in New Zealand while I'm living here in Utah is quite different than what my parents did in the Shackley days. But it's the technology that we have today that allows us to do that, which is awesome. It's a great foundation that you were given by your parents to be able to do that kind of independent work and to see it grow. And I've always had kind of an adverse, um, and I think a lot of people do, when it used to be called multi-level marketing, now it's called direct sales. And I think we have gone through this evolution, especially post-COVID, where so many people are looking for something to be independent are looking for something that they believe in, that they don't really have to sell. I'm going to air quote that sell because we've known each other now for a few years. And when I was introduced to Levedon, which I'd like to go into and, and chat about that, it changed my my life because, and, and I'm sure you've heard that many, many times, but one decision, and it seems so simple, but when it hits, when it's the right decision and it hits, it really does impact all areas of your life. So let's let's go back to, well, let's go back actually a little further before Levedon because you have six children, you have a beautiful wife, Heather, and you did this business together. So, and it's such a fun story too, the way that you and Heather met. And I would love to just touch on that. Um, so, you know, family's big for us. Um, I was just thinking about my grandmother the other day when she passed away, she was a hundred and she had a hundred in her posterity. So that's a big, and growing up, I, what I remember more than anything else is, you know, because of the success with Shackley, um, we had a very unusual home. Yeah. The home we grew up in was, was massive and it's 76 rooms. And what was interesting is in 1980, my dad, uh, took the blueprints from the Poly Pavilion, um, which is a gymnasium that uh, UCLA Bruins play on, and built that in our backyard. And being in Minnesota, where it's extremely cold, he built an underground tunnel from the house to the gym, and then hired Philip Saunders, who be, became the first uh, NBA coach for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He was our personal trainer for about five years. So it was just wow. a really unique situation. And of course, my mom had a stage built on it so we could perform. But what I remember most about my childhood is that we we celebrated everything you know all the different holidays and and we celebrated non-holidays and my grandparents and my uncles and aunts and my cousins and everybody would come over to our house and we would just feast and the the adults would kind of be up in the house all day long and my grandfather was a card shark so we would play a lot of cards watch a lot of football the kids we would be down in the gym just going nuts you know all day long and and some of my greatest memories in this life have, have just been around holidays with family. And so family's always been extremely important. And I was actually living in St. George, um, single, uh, 35 years old. And I went on a uh, kind of a church dating site. And I saw this profile um, of Heather, and I, I thought it was a joke. So I, I, I shot a quick response. To, I actually joined the service so that I could send her a message. And I never heard anything back from her, so I, I, I just kind of... That was the end of that. About a month later, um, I came in from playing golf. I lived on a golf course at the time. And I had a message from this, this Heather on that dating site. And I thought, is that that same girl, you know? And so sure enough, uh, it was. And, and I just said, hey, listen, uh, not very good at this. Let's just give me your phone number. I'll give you a call. So we talked for three weeks on the phone. And then I flew down to Phoenix on a Friday and met her. And we were engaged on Sunday. <laughs> We were married a month later and that was 20 years ago. So it seemed to work out, but we both have very strong personalities and we feel like that long distance dating probably wouldn't have been very good for us. So I think we had to do it pretty quick. <laughs> that is such a great love story. So that's been how many years? 20. 
20 years. Congratulations. Yeah. I and six love children. the stories around your family. And I know that family, because of the way that you ra were raised, is of the utmost importance. And children are very important. And so when you and Heather got together, then you, how long after before you decided to create Love Eden? Well, so when we got married, we got into the nutritional division of New Skin. It's called Pharmanax. Um, and we had a lot of success with them. And then we were introduced to a company called Synergy. And we were with them for um, about seven years. We sat on their advisory board, um, had a lot of success with them. But Heather just kind of in the back of her mind always thought we needed to combine our two backgrounds. So her background is she went to school uh, for exercise physiology, uh, got her degree in, and then her master's in fitness sciences um, and is very educated. I'm not on the other hand. I went to school for sports. Then I got into sales and, and I've just been doing what I do ever since. So we kind of complement each other really well because she's kind of the academia and I'm not. And yet we, we, we fit really well. And we just kind of combine our two backgrounds. And she's the healthiest human being that I've ever known. She's got all the degrees. She understands the body. She competed professionally in fitness. She owned a gym. So she's got all the accolades behind it. But she lives health more than anybody I've ever known. I mean, and it's everything that she does. Like with our kids, they don't do artificial food colors or they don't do sodas. They don't do Twinkies. They don't do anything like that, you know. And, you know, she's very, very dedicated. And so she kept saying, with your background in, in, in the networking space and with my background with, with nutrition, we, we just need to do this ourselves. We need to create a product that will allow people to bring their body into balance first thing in the morning because that's the most important thing. And she trained hundreds of people. She noticed that if people started their day off wrong, you know, coffee and donuts or bagels and cream cheese or Fruit Loops or they skip breakfast, it really set them up to fail the rest of the day. And yet, on the other hand, if they balanced their body first thing in the morning and had a focus on that, those are the people that are in fantastic shape. And she experienced that for six years having to compete, you know, at the highest levels in the country. You know, you, you can't lose the battle of blood sugar. So if your blood sugar gets out of whack, you crave everything. And I don't care who you are. If you, if you crave stuff, it's, it's hard to just constantly have that willpower. So she wanted to create a product that was what is kind of a compilation of her entire life. And so that's what we are. Uh, Levitin is a super greens product. We say it's 14 supplements in one. You've got your vitamins and minerals, pre and probiotics, your proteins, your enzymes. It's a phenomenal product. And we've been selling it now for over six years, you know, different countries throughout the world. And the, the results have been just unbelievable. Uh, you know, I constantly hear people that had, you know, coffee addictions or soda addictions or sugar addictions or that have always struggled with their gut, you know, with, with digestive issues. They get on a product and it clears it up. But it's just awesome, you know, hearing the stories. Uh, I'll share one because this is pretty cool. Uh, it's a friend of mine out in Hawaii. He introduced it to a friend of his, and she'd been struggling with Coca-Cola addictions for 20 years. Tried it many, many times, but couldn't give up her Coca-Cola. And my friend Eddie just gave her some of her product, and she said that first day she took her product, she didn't crave the Coca-Cola, so she didn't have it. Or the second day or the third day, and after a week, she couldn't believe it. So she said to Eddie, you know, how, how do I get this product? So she became just a customer and, and got on her product. Well, I spoke with her about six months after the fact, and I asked her what her results were. And she said that um, because our product was able to help her get off Coca-Cola, she lost 42 pounds in wow. a month without trying. Just eliminating that from her diet made all the difference in her health. And that's what the product's designed to do is, you know, what are your cravings? Um, I'm doing a little weight loss focus right now for myself. Um, mm -hmm because the golf season is over, which is a depressing time for me. And like most people, when we're depressed, we tend to overeat. Um, you know, during the season, it's awesome for me. I, I The last couple of years, I've been able to get down to like my college playing weight um, during the summers because I, I compete, you know, um, with golf. Uh, but when the season ends, it's it's kind of a little bit of a letdown. You know what I mean? All the things. Sure. That and the change of seasons also impacts us. Yes. And so... You know, for me, I start my day with our balanced, you know, super greens protein, but I also need that second shot later in the day because I don't really crave the bad stuff usually during the day. It's, it's as I get later in the day. So right now, as I'm kind of focusing on, on dropping a couple pounds, I take it twice a day because it really does help. Many times when I wake up, because um, I train pretty hard, and sometimes when I wake up, I'm just really hungry. Um, and what I, what I found is if I'll just 
create my Navidin Health Shake. I put in a little extra protein, a cup of frozen berries. Uh, the way I take it, it's about 350 calories and 30 grams of protein. And then I just wait like 30 minutes and the cravings are gone. Mm-hmm. So I go from like being starving and wanting to eat my arm to being totally content. And you know, then I can go two, three hours before I have to eat. So that's one of the biggest blessings of the product is helping with those cravings. Because like I said, if, you, if you're craving, life isn't very fun. That was one of the biggest impacts or immediate things that I noticed when I started taking it. And when I started taking it five years ago, I was very depleted. Our mutual friend, our naturopath turned me on to it. And and through the tool that she uses, we found out that this was going to bring me into balance. And I was struggling with thyroid condition, no energy, using caffeine is just a way to get me through the day. Um, Then I was crashing in the afternoon. There was just, it was too much. I was also, I also saw an integrative medicine doctor and gave me a a plethora of other things that were going on. Now I believe in the power of the mind. I believe in the power of your spiritual connection. And so I was like, nope, that's not going to happen. And, And then I asked spirit to bring me what I needed to move through this obstacle of a health challenge. And boom, just dropped into my head that my doctor had, my naturopath had turned me on to this product. I was taking it wrong. I was taking it haphazardly. I was taking it here, there, and, and when I felt like it or remembered. But when I read the ingredients, which the ingredients are so robust, Marty, When we did a comparison later on when I decided, oh, I want to see if it's not just me, if it's actually going to help other people and started integrating it into the work that I do and and, uh, did a group where I connected with them every day at 7 a.m. We did like a meditation and we all got on Levitin and, and then we would talk about it and see what was happening for everyone. Immediately, I noticed for myself my energy level went up and the cravings stopped. And then when I started taking it uh, initially with, uh, I was using almond milk, then I went to cashew milk, then I went to macadamia milk, then I went to coconut milk, then I went, I don't even want that. But So now I just do cold water and that works for me. I like how thin it is. I like how smooth it is. It's refreshing. But then those cravings are not there, whether it's for me, it was sugar and carbs. So then boosting the energy, changing in hormones. Also, you know, you don't go through those high highs and low lows. You were, again, balancing yourself out. So, you know, I'm a huge fan. And I love the fact that when I first started wanting to then share it with other people, you said to me, we don't ever sell Levitin. You just share your story. And that I love so much. The other thing that I want to mention about this, which you can't put on a label, is that you could have a product that has the exact same ingredients and put it side to side. And I will bet that I could pick out which one was yours. Because there's an energy that comes with a why about a company, the foundation of a company. And in all the years that I've known you and Heather, what the company stands for and how you lead your lives is energetically infused in this product. The, the spiritual aspect of who you are comes through this product. And you're doing it for, of course, you want to build uh, a a reputation. You want to build wealth for your family, generational wealth for your family, which I think we would all want to do. But you give a platform from a really great, strong spiritual foundation. So that I'll get off my soapbox on that one. But um, I just want to thank you for for that. I, I love this product. So every bag that you sell of this Levitin Superfood Product Balance. You feed children. Tell us about that. Well, you know, Heather really wanted to do that when we started the company. She had seen a few other companies that had done things like that. And she just thought it was a great way to kind of give back. So we give back in multiple ways. But one of the ways that we do is every time somebody buys a bag of products, we donate 10 meals to children in need. 
in over 20 different countries around the world. And we have kind of, you know, uh, partners that we we do that with. But that was Heather's idea. And, and we've been doing it since the day we started. So it's, it's been really fun. Um, and it can make a big impact, you know, and I tell some of our brand partners that if you develop a group where there's say a hundred customers ordering product every month and they're just ordering one bag, that's a hundred bags of product. That's a thousand kids that are being fed every month by you just going out and, 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 and sharing our product with people and building a team. And so we literally have people in our group who have literally fed hundreds of thousands of kids, um, you know, over the last six years, which is pretty cool. You know, just by going out and, and, and sharing, you know, there's a few truisms that I live by. Every once in a while, you hear a quote and it just sticks with you the rest of your life. And Steve Jobs said, when you're truly excited, you you don't have to be pushed the vision pulls you. And I remember when when Heather and I first got married, um, I'm not a morning person or like she is. You know, she owned a gym and everything and, and she's used to getting up at like 4.30 in the morning. Well, that's too early for me. But, you know, I would get up at like five, which is really early for me to go play golf. And she used to always comment, like, how is it that you can get up at five to play golf, but you can never get up for anything else? You know what I mean? And it's because it's that it's that truism, right? Like you, when you're really excited about something, when you're passionate about it, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you. So I didn't need to set an alarm. I didn't need somebody to remind me to wake up because I was playing golf and I was excited. Right. So when you can find that in your life, it, it totally changes your life. You know, if you think about it, if, if you're dreading what you do for work. You don't love what you do and you're just doing it because you have to pay the bills and life just kind of goes that way. But when you're doing what you love and you, you firmly believe in what you're doing and you're passionate about it, uh, it just changes everything. And, you know, Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And that's the other thing that I, I really try to focus my life and in, in all areas of my life, whether it's spiritual, physical, financial, it doesn't matter. I am a combination of what I do every day. And so if I want to get in better shape, say spiritually, I can't ignore it. There's certain things I have to do. If I want to get in better shape physically. There's certain things I have to do every single day. And that's how, you know, I, I try to live my life. I'm not perfect by any sense of the means, but uh, our daily routine is really important. And, you know, when you think about our product for a minute, one of the biggest challenges that people face, in, in my opinion, is we have so many poor choices. We lived in Connecticut for a while, and there was billboards for Dunkin' Donuts everywhere. It says, America runs on Dunkin'. Americans run on coffee and donuts. Well, if that's what you do, you're on your way to work, you stop by Dunkin' Donuts, you grab a coffee and a donut, and you get in that cycle. Well, it's a really unhealthy cycle, uh, but there's millions of people in that cycle. We want to help break the cycle. We want to help people get a really solid morning routine. Because we are what we repeatedly do. So if we can just help people get us get off to a solid start, you're not going to be perfect. You're still going to eat a cheeseburger from now and then or a piece of pizza or whatever the case may be. It's going to happen. But if we can have a really good morning routine and day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, you know, for me personally, Lee, I was after my athletic days, I probably weighed about 205 for about 20 years on average, maybe a little higher, a little lower, but in general, over a 20-year span, I was probably about 205. And then six years ago, when we created this product and I started my day this way, um, you know, every day, um, I went from 200 down to, two, you know, 205 to 200 to 195 to 190 and, and was able to get back to where I played college, you know, nearly 35 years ago and, and get back there and stay there um, without dieting, without restricting my calories, without two-day workouts, without all the stuff that you think, right? Just naturally, that one simple thing for me, changing that, what I do to start my day, because we are what we repeatedly do. And then that's such a crucial message. I totally agree. What you find is that I think in the times that we're living in, right, post-COVID, post-pandemic, um, a lot of people are just leading their life from this constant state of stress, anxiety, maybe even PTSD, right? Just constantly humming along there and not even realizing it because it's been the norm for so long. And even if you think that you are eating well, there are still choices that you're making to soothe yourself. Maybe, maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's that, you know, that piece of cake or, but what you're how you're using it. Whereas I say when you're saying, yeah, you can still have that piece of pizza, but are you using 
the food to soothe you. So there is an element of your patterning that is from a place of、um, dis ease in the body. Whereas I find when you are feeding yourself properly, starting your day in the morning, you don't fall into those. Habits that you might have had, those programs, those patterns that are from a place of soothing yourself in a poor manner. Speaking of the pandemic, have you found that things have changed? How your business is growing post pandemic? You know, post pandemic, I, th- I feel like life is getting. Back more towards normal again, with the exception of everything so expensive. Everything in the world has just gone through the roof. So. For us, it's been a little bit of a challenge because our product is a lot more expensive today than it was when we started six years ago. Ingredients are up; the cost of everything has gone through the roof. We we grew pretty exponentially internationally, and that was kind of on purpose. We have some good leaders in different parts of the world, and just the shipping costs have gone way up.、Um, and you know, so those have been some challenges. You know, post COVID, just dealing with the price of everything, you know, going up so much.、Um, But in general, I would say that that things are kind of back to normal,、um, and you know people are excited to get back to work, and and、uh, so it's good. Speaking of how expensive things are, you can't go to the grocery store and and walk out of there without you know being shocked. I, I'm surprised at how how expensive things are if you're buying a few things and you try to eat well, organically, you know, certain, fresh, definitely fresh. But I still don't believe that we are getting the nutrients that we need. Even if you are trying your best to eat healthfully, because our soil is so depleted, and I can't imagine. I think we could we could get away with it years ago when we were kids, not supplementing. Although I grew up with supplementing, my my mother was really great in the foundation of health and wellness in natural ways. But now I don't think anybody should be without supplementation. I still think this is very reasonably priced. And if you're swapping out something else that you're buying at the grocery store, if you realize that what you no longer need to buy when you are on this, it is not an additional cost to be on balance, Levitin. Well, something that's interesting: a major university was just. That said, seventy-five percent of all of the food consumed in the United States is considered ultra-processed foods. Seventy-five percent. Five percent of all the food consumed in the United States. So you know that's not healthy options right there, but that's what we're faced with, right? Like my dad pointed out the other day, he had to go to a convenience store, and he said there wasn't a single thing in the entire convenience store that he felt was healthy. And a lot of people. You know, have their lunch at a convenience store. You know, you get like a hot dog or a little mini pizza or whatever the case would be. We're busy people and we're on the go. And so, like, what are the healthy options? You know, the healthy options are when you're at home and you're cooking and you're preparing and everything else. But people live busy lives, and so it's just crazy on how it's just moved to this ultra processed lifestyle that we all are faced with because it's right there, and it makes it really hard to make good choices, especially in the U.S. Yeah, so you're not the- complimenting. And seventy-five percent of all the con- food consumed is non-nutrient-based, ultra-processed. How are you making? It? You know, and that's that's why supplementation is really important because the options that we have. You know, if you,、uh, you know, going back、um, early in my career when Heather and I first got married,、um, we did a lot of traveling, and she always went with me, and I maintained a weight of about two hundred. And we were literally on the road every week. We were flying different parts of the world, and we were building a business, and it was just it was a crazy time for us. And then she got pregnant with our oldest daughter, Mary. And after about six months of traveling with me, she just said it was too much. So she stayed home, and I, I kept the, the madness going. And it took about ninety days, and I went up to two hundred and twenty-seven pounds. Ninety days. And that was because when Heather wasn't there, you know, I was living in hotels, I was in airports constantly, and there was McDonald's. Of course, with them with Heather, we'd never eat McDonald's. But she wasn't with me, and it was—I was craving something. I was in an airport, and boom, you know. But that's the problem, because once you eat a, a cheeseburger at McDonald's and a, and a big chocolate milkshake, which I love, then you become addicted to it, right? And you start craving it. There's sugar in it. Yeah, and so we literally are what we eat, and so we eat healthy. We're healthy. If we eat unhealthy, we're unhealthy, and so forth. But 
it goes back to that we are what we repeatedly do, right? So what are my habits? Well, I got in bad habits. You know, I was eating at McDonald's. I was, you know, eating late and, and those types of things. And so it can affect anybody. I'll tell you one quick story because it's kind of fun. A couple of years ago, I really wanted to qualify for the uh, the Utah Senior State Am Championship. And I was working hard and, and felt like I had it. And I, I played a, it's a one-day qualifier. It's brutal because they only have like eight qualifying spots. And I thought I did it. Ninth was the alternate and I was 10th. So I just missed out on it. And I, and I was pretty depressed, but... So I went to the grocery store on my way home and I bought a cake, not a slice, but a cake. And then I sat down and I ate the entire thing. That day I walked 18 holes of championship golf in the heat of the day and gained four pounds because I ate an entire chocolate cake. But that's what happens, right? Like, I mean, stress and environment and different types of things. So it's so important to have good routines in our life because those days are coming. None of us are perfect. None of us are going to eat kale and spinach 24 hours a day, right? So, it, And the reason I share all this with you is because if we can just have a solid routine, it helps bring us back when we have those days where we didn't qualify, you know what I mean? And we decide to have a chocolate cake or whatever it may be. Um, that's funny. Back to, that's the essence of our company is we want to help everybody just have a good, solid morning routine because it helps you in ways that, you know, show up all over the place. It's a great story. And the fact that you don't beat yourself up about it, because I think that's really important as well. You know, we as humans, I think, have that pattern where we're doing well, whether it's exercise and fitness or supplementation and you're feeling amazing, you're sleeping well, and you're really in that slipstream, I call it. Everything's great and humming. And then all of a sudden you think that you don't need these things. Right. Or some some other factor comes in and kicks us off our our program, our pattern. And then we start eating junk food or we you know, stop drinking water or we stop taking our supplementation or whatever. And then we realize that the body has a little bit of buffer room and then it starts to scream for it. Right. Like and it'll show you because the body is always talking to you. And you'll see it, whether it's in your skin or in your eyes or how you feel or you're feeling sluggish, you know, even if it's just to make sure that when flu season comes around or whatever comes our way, that we, that we have this extra supplementation to get us through that, uh, that difficult challenge. I'd like to jump into some spiritual stuff now, if that's okay with you. And I think that you've been very open about the obstacles that you have had in your life and some significant obstacles. Can you talk to a time that you uh, come to that is one of the biggest obstacles that you've had and, and how your spiritual life has gotten you through it? You know, for me, there's never been any time in my life where, you know, a spiritual nature wasn't really important because my parents were that way. And so from the time I can remember, we always went to church. We always had family prayer. We always did things together as a family and always, right? Even to the day I'm 55 years old, there's just never been a time in my life where that wasn't, you know, just, you know, the essence of who I am. As, as spiritual, I, I, I think as I am, my wife is uh, more so, <laughs> And uh, is constantly teaching. We're talking a couple hours a day, every day, with my kids and everything else. But to kind of answer your question, you know, years ago, my my dad got involved with a gold mine. And um, he was super excited about it. And if you know my dad, he's very passionate. And he's the epitome of Steve Jobs' quote, when you're excited about something, you know, the, the vision pulls you. And so the people that got involved and the geologists that got involved and there was 26 full-time miners and they were mining, you know, around the clock for a year and a half. And he was super excited about it, but they needed to raise some capital. Um, you know, my dad literally funded the whole thing himself as long as he could, but it's really an expensive operation. And so at the time, my sisters, my brother and I all kind of got involved and, and made some phone calls for my dad and, and, and helped him raise some capital. Well, long story short, the gold mine didn't it didn't produce gold and, and my parents lost everything. Um, and it was a really, really challenging time. And, um, you know, it shouldn't be this way, but a lot of people in, in, in life, they kind of correlate you know, money and success with, you know, having a successful life. And I learned firsthand that whether you have millions or you have nothing, whether you're living in a 40,000 square foot home or an apartment, none of that really matters. What matters is 
where are you at with with the Savior and where are you at and what is your focus in life? And there's there's a little video that we show the kids every year around Christmas time, and it's a 17 minute video. Um, it's about the birth of the Savior, and it's just not a lot of talking. In fact, there's hardly any talking, but it's just one of those 17 minutes where you just feel really good. And at the very end of this kind of birth of the Savior, it just says, Jesus of Nazareth uh, went about doing good. And then it said, this Christmas season, so can you. And to me, that's the essence of life. It's not how much money we make. It's not how successful we are. It's not, it's, do you focus on just doing good? And and that means, you know, you're driving down the road, somebody cuts you off, what do you do? You know, you're you're walking in a store and there's somebody coming behind you, do you hold the door? You know, it's just, do you focus on just being a good person and doing good? Because I think that's the essence of why we're here. And so for me, I've been on both spectrums. I mean, I've, I've built businesses that have done well over $2 billion in sales, made millions, tens of millions of dollars. But I've also had times in my life where I've really struggled financially. There's been times in my life I've been a competitive athlete in fantastic shape. There's been other times where I've been really out of shape, you know, had have a great situation with a, my wife and six kids. But there were times where, um, you know, I, I didn't have that. And so I feel like with my life, I've developed, well, I've had a lot of situations on both ends of the spectrum. And um, that's when you really realize that life is about just focusing on the good, doing the best you can, and understanding that not everything works out how you want it to, but that's okay. I love that. And I've always felt that about you, your authenticity, and there is a humility about you that really shines through. So would you consider yourself religious? And what do you think the difference between being religious and spiritual? And is there a difference for you? I'm kind of curious. I would say, am I religious? Yes, because I have a religion. And am I spiritual? Yes, because it's the focus of everything I do. For me, I, you know, once again, I get back into those routines. And so, um, you know, studying the scriptures and praying and pondering and all those types of things, that's just woven into my daily experience. So how I start my day, how I end my day. It's all based on that. Uh, so, and I believe that when you, when you live your life, there's one scripture that I, um, that above all scriptures, and it's, it's by one of my all time favorite prophets, but the scripture in general basically says that when we wake up in the morning, let your heart be full of thanks. And when you go to bed at night, lie down unto the Lord. And if you do these things, you should be lifted up at the last day. And the bottom line for me is when you wake up in the morning, have an attitude of thankfulness. Mm -hmm. It will change your day. No matter what you have going in your day, if you start your day with, you know, you may be sick or you may be broke or you may be in the middle of a hurricane or a pandemic or whatever the case may be. And there's lots of negative things that you could focus on. But if you wake up in the morning, even amidst all of that, and what am I thankful for? You know what I mean? Because there's the list is endless. Even if you're going through the, the, the hurricanes of life, you still have so many things you're thankful for. So if you start your day off every day of your life on your knees in gratitude for the things that you do have, not what you don't have, for the things that you're grateful for, not that you're ungrateful for. And so I really feel like that's the secret to life right there is is start your day off that way. And it puts you in a mindset to where if something goes wrong or it doesn't go your way or, you know, you catch a really bad cold or you get a disease or whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? It, you, you can deal with it a lot better. And so am I a spiritual person, religious person? Yes. But I also feel that, you know, what we do matters and the way that we treat people matters and the way that we live our life matters. And so I, I, I like, like Jesus, just try to do good. I want to show you my my mini rubber Jesus. <laughs> I have my mini rubber Jesus here next. To <laughs> a friend of mine. That was great. I loved. I loved that answer. Um, I usually ask people, do they pray? And um, and I'm curious about how different people pray. And I I love when you integrate prayer into every aspect of your life. Everything is a prayer. Everything can be a prayer. 
But a friend of mine lives out of state and um, was in town for a conference and connected with her. And um, Tammy, I'm going to give you a shout out. And anyway, she hands me one of these and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this little mini rubber Jesus. And she said a friend of hers gave her one and she leaves them places. And so it just says, Jesus loves you on there. I'm like, I have gotten so much joy (laughs) out of this little mini rubber Jesus where I bought a bag and I've started doing that same thing. We're just leaving it places where someone (laughs) might get a little message. So anyway, so a couple more questions that I'd like if you still have time. What do you think the purpose of life is? The purpose of life? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a big question. I know. Um, well, and because, because of your religion, do you believe, I don't know what your belief system is on this topic, but do you believe that we reincarnate or that this is the only life? No, we, we believe that in the scriptures for us, that the purpose of, of, of God is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man or mankind. So say that again for me is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man or mankind. So okay. us to live with him again, um, in a state of never any happiness, what we believe, and it's what keeps me going that what we do in this life matters. And if we are faithful and if we are good people, and if we, help other people and, and choose to do the right things rather than choose to live our life the opposite, that, you know, we can have that immortality in eternal life, which is what has always been the focal point for me since, since I was old enough to think for myself, you know what I mean? And that, that Jesus is the way that he and, and showed us exactly the way to live and exactly the way to be. And you know, he's known as the, as the peacekeeper. And where would the world be if everybody focused on being a peacekeeper? You know, it would, it would change overnight, you know? Yes, sir. And so that's what I believe we're, we're here to do is to uh, be key peacekeepers and, and, and help as many people as we can and choose to be a good person. And that the benefit and is ultimately eternal life. Amen. (laughs) I love that. Thank you. I'd like to wrap up with any words of wisdom for the younger generation. I believe that we are living in an extraordinary time in human history and that um, history books will be certainly written about this time. But as we have moved through um, major changes over our lifetimes, what could you reflect on to give a piece of wisdom or a piece of advice to the younger generation? I'm sure you do this all the time with your children um, to make their lives a little bit more aware, not easier, but yeah. a little bit more aware. I'll, I'll use another scripture because I think it's right. so important today, uh, more so than any other time in the history of our world. And that is because there's so much temptation and there's so many things that pull younger kids in the wrong direction. You know, they can get locked on a video game for hours or social media for hours or all these things that are just time wasters that ultimately don't help them advance in any way, shape or form. Right. But this little scripture is really simple. And it says by small and simple things or great things come to pass. So if you want to be great at something, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, if you want to be great at athletics or great in school or great at whatever it is that you want to be great at, the world wants you to believe you can do it right now. You know what I mean? You want to be super something great, just whatever. But that's not the reality, and that's not life. And the scriptures teach us that by small and simple things are great things come to pass. Well, it takes those small, simple things repeatedly doing day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, for a lifetime to become great at something. And so... One thing I would say to the younger generation is when you find what it is that you want to do, 
It's the small and simple things that you do on a daily basis that are ultimately going to help you achieve success or not. So I, I love athletics because I think most people can relate. My my senior year, they had a three point. It was the inaugural three point shooting contest for the state. Um, so they had a contest, and they had all the different schools in the entire state shoot off, and whoever won for that school then went to um, my senior year. I played basketball in Utah, and so we we went to where the Jazz, the Utah Jazz, play. All the winners from all the schools in the state of Utah shot off all day on a Saturday to get down to the finals, and then the finals, the two two left standing shot at halftime of the jazz and I think be one of the two. Um, so here we are in front of 20,000 people. Um, you know, the announcers are just building this whole thing up. These are the best basketball shooters in the country, future NBA stars. And it's just making this big deal, right? It's televised on TV. And here I am standing center court at the halftime of the jazz game with Brian Santiago, who's the associate athletic director right now at BYU had a nice career at Fresno state. So here we are. And they set up five balls around each side and they buzz the horn. You go down, you shoot your five, you, you switch sides, you shoot five. Whoever makes the most out of 10 is the three point shooting champion. So <clears throat> they buzz the horn. I go down and I pull up and I shoot from the corner and I miss. But I knew that Brian had missed because the crowd wasn't cheering. They, they let out a big sigh. Go to my second one. I miss my third one. I miss. I missed all five. Oh. Fine. I just. The, the hot rod Hundley is the announcer for the jazz. He just built up in front of 20,000 people on that, on television. These are the best three point shooters in the state. And I missed all five. Well, guess what? So did Brian. So if you meet at half court in front of 20,000 people, they're booing at this point. 20,000 people are booing as both of us just went oh for five. Now we got to go to the other side of the court and shoot five shots. I'll tell you that I've never been, I played in a lot of athletic contests and I've been in a lot of pressure situations, but nothing like this. And I remember saying a little silent prayer, Heavenly Father, just help me make one shot. You know what I mean? I don't need to win the tournament anymore. I just want to make a shot. You know what I mean? And I went down and I made four out of five and I won a three-point shooting contest for State of Utah. And four out of 10 is 40%, which that year would have led the NBA in three-point shooting, uh, you know, back in, in 1987. Um, so it ultimately ended up working out. But what I want to share is that the reason I believe I was able to do what I was able to do under the most pressure situation of my career at that time is to come through in front of 20,000 people. And I just went over five was because of those small and simple things that I had done for my entire life leading up to that point that when I needed to perform, I was able to, I remember I used to go down to our gym and I would bring a notepad with me and I would shoot 10 free throws. And then I'd write down, you know, eight out of 10 and then nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, seven out of 10 until I got to 500 free throws. And then I would say, okay, I made 452 out of 500 free throws, you know, 92% or whatever it was. And then I would show my dad, dad, look at, you know, and I did that over and over and over again. So I, I don't think there's anybody in the country that shot more than I did, which is why ultimately I ended up being a pretty good shooter. But it was those small and simple things that I did over a lifetime that ultimately led to that. And if I had any advice for anybody that wants to be successful at anything, what are the small and simple things that you're doing? They're not exciting. They're probably boring. But it's what makes all the difference in the world long term. And the prayer. Oh, absolutely. I love it. Marty, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And please... Thank Heather as well, because I know that she's holding down the fort. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, and thank everybody for watching, and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks.